Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so in this lesson, we're going to get making the bass line. So, so far, we have only used drum samples, but in order to make a bass line, we want to use an instrument to create a musical pattern. So for the bass line, we'll use pattern two. Now at the moment, pattern two, of course, has our sort of hat pattern that we put in there, more of an example than anything else. So we can actually just go into pattern two, make sure we got this selected, and then we can delete all of the notes just by right clicking and dragging. And you can see the pattern over there is now empty, and we can also just delete those as well by right clicking and dragging over it. So you can add an instrument into FL Studio in a couple of ways. One is to go to the browser, remember to click the left hand tab, uh, and then just close packs for now. And then we can go to plugin database and then generators. And then you've got various different options for synth. So it'll be under synth classic. You can see the instruments down here. We'll actually be using GMS, but there's another way as well, which is probably the slightly more common way of getting instruments into your track. And that's by clicking the plus button and then just scroll down to GMS. Click that and we can see the GMS instrument that's loaded. So the GMS instrument, which comes with FL Studio, is what's called a synthesizer, and it's capable of making all sorts of different sounds, from leads to bass sounds, effect sounds, and pretty much everything in between. So we're not going to get too much into the actual synthesis side of things, as this course really is for beginners. But as with most instruments, the GMS comes with loads of ready-made instrument patches, that we can load and then tweak if we want to. So just so you know, if you have this button here highlighted, you can actually use the keys on your typing keyboard to audition the sounds in the synth. So most of the keys on your keyboard can be used, but bear in mind this really isn't for playing melodies in. I mean, you can sort of do basic melodies on it, but it's more as a way of just auditioning the sound that's coming out of GMS. Now, if you have a MIDI keyboard, I'll show you very quickly how to set that up in literally about 15 seconds, but just be aware that you don't actually need a MIDI keyboard for this tutorial as we're gonna program all of our melodies in manually, but I know it will be important for many of you to know how to set it up in FL. So I'll show it very quickly here. So as long as it's a USB MIDI keyboard, you can pretty much just plug it in and you're good to go. What you do need to do in FL though is go to options, Go to MIDI settings, and what you want to do is select your keyboard from the second list here. Now, mine's the Impact GX61, and normally this will be enabled, so you just need to click enable, and then that's it. You're good to go. MIDI keyboard is set up. Now, you can just audition or play a melody on your keyboard. Just make sure that you do have the instrument selected. If you have something else selected, like the hat, for example, then that's what you'll trigger. So just make sure that you've got the instrument itself and you'll be able to play in whatever melody you like. So this sound is a little bit nasty and not at all what we want. So we want to pick a different instrument patch. So just come down to where it says basses at the moment. And this brings up our preset library and there's many, many different patches, like I've said. So these are all the bass ones and you've got leads and synths, pads and textures and loads of different presets in each one. So for now, we want a bass and we want to scroll down and I want one called Scully TE. So when you click on it, it will load the patch and you can see that the instrument behind us just updated, slightly different settings. And now when I play it, so again, I can just use my keyboard to audition the sound that's playing. And that's a nice plucky sort of bass sound that's gonna suit our house track nicely. So what we need to do now is actually make the melody for our bass line, but we can't obviously use the step sequencer here. If we sort of program in notes, it's just gonna sound a bit weird. because it's all monotone, it's just playing one singular note. So what we want to do is just come over to where it says GMS. We're gonna right click and click on the piano roll. And you can see here down the side of this window, we've got all of the keys. Just like on a piano keyboard, for example. And then in this window, we can actually start drawing in notes. So just click once just to add a note. And again, you can just right click to delete those notes. And if I wanna hear what I'm actually making, I'm just gonna set my playhead at the beginning there. 
and for now it will just loop round. You can also change the length of notes by clicking at the end of the sort of MIDI note and just dragging that to make it longer or shorter. So this is going to be a simple house track which is going to have a basic musical structure so it's not super necessary to have any music theory knowledge in order to be able to do this. That said, having a basic music theory knowledge is really helpful when it comes to making your own tracks as you'll be able to make your own chord progressions and melodies and be able to change those throughout your track to make it really engaging to the listener whether it be deeply emotional or like a dance floor slammer. Now, if you're interested in making awesome chord progressions and melodies, then definitely check out our music theory for EDM producers tutorial, as it will take you from all of the basics, literally from the scale level, right through to having a full musical structure for your entire track. And it's made for complete beginners to music theory. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is gonna be fairly simple on a musical level. And you might be wondering, how should you come up with a melody? And there are, of course, many different ways. Now, the way I'm going to do it today, and this is actually the way that I came up with this specific melody when I wrote it, and that is I just had the beat made like we have, and I just sort of hummed various different melodies until I had something that I liked. Then I just transfer the notes that I hummed to the piano roll, and hey presto, you've got a melody. It's not rocket science, but it is really effective, and I actually do this process quite a lot. So I'll just close this window for a second and I'll play the beat. Now just a quick tip, if I click in the timeline in the arrange window, it actually sort of activates song mode. So it means that this area will play. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly hum and please excuse my humming, but I'm just going to hum over the top of this or sort of show you the idea that I came up with. So it was something like this. And then it's just sort of repeats from there. Now all I've got to do, I've got my melody and I just need to transfer it into FL. So I'm just going to again go to the piano roll. So din, 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 da, 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 da. that's like the first sort of two bars. And if I just hit play by hitting the little button here, it will just switch to pattern mode so I can hear what I'm doing. Now, one thing is here that I really need a beat behind this so I can actually program in the correct rhythm of the melody. So it's not very much good if I just have this. I need a beat behind it to be able to sort of tell where I should be putting notes. But of course, in pattern mode, I can only hear this pattern play or I can hear the drum beat. I can't hear both at the same time. So there's a couple of different options. If you just want a very quick fix, then just click on the metronome button up the top. And now when I play it, so I can start programming in my melody now because I've got a bit of a beat. So I'm just gonna show this way first, uh, but really need to zoom in a little bit. So zooming in, in either the piano roll or in the arrange window is exactly the same. So this bar up the top here, this allows you to sort of scroll around. And also if you click on the end there, we get a slight double ended arrow. You can actually use it to zoom in as well to any points on the track. Or you can hold control or command on your keyboard and just use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out as well, which is probably the easiest way of doing it. So. We're going to zoom in a little bit just so we've got the first bar here. And I think my melody, which is dun, 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 dun. So it's going to be sort of something like this. Du, du. There we go. Perfect already. Just going to shorten those. So it's all really easy to edit these notes and everything. So I want to make this longer than just one bar. It needs to be four bars long. So I'm actually going to close the piano roll just for a second and then make sure we got pattern two selected, which it should be already. And then I'm going to draw in just one bar here and then I'm going to drag it out so it covers a full four bars. And you can see there we've got our pattern and I can also click here to switch this to song mode or of course you can just do it up here if you want. And then when I play it, And now I can hear it with the beat. Now I've got the beat behind it, so I don't need the metronome on anymore. I can just turn that off. And if I want to edit pan two, I don't have to come over to the GMS now. 
and go to piano roll because it's already in our project. I can just double click it and our melody or baseline melody is already there. So let's carry on and get this sorted. Dun, 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 dun. So you know, that note there, dun. I just need to make that a bit longer. Not quite right. Perfect. Uh, dun, dun. So the next note, dun, 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 dun. So that note. So I know the next sort of line is going to be in G5, but I think it's got the same pattern as what I've got in the first bar there. So I'm actually going to select multiple notes at once by holding my control key or command key on a Mac. And then you can select multiple events. And then if you hold shift and then click and drag them, it'll copy them over. Uh, now I've got them over here, I can then drop them down two semitones. So it's now on G. And one thing that might actually be quite helpful for you at the moment, you can see the keys over here are just labeled C to C, which is one octave. And our melody starts in A5, but the keys over here aren't labeled. So you can actually label these. Just go to the drop down menu here, go to view, and then under key labels, select all notes. And then all of them are just labeled. It might make it a little bit easier for you if you're not familiar with a keyboard. So just copy what I'm doing at the moment. That's fine now. So at the moment, my melody is starting in A5, which actually is a little bit high for a bass line, really. We probably want this to be down an octave, so I'd move it down to A4. Sounds a bit more sort of house bassy in that key. So I've got two different ways of moving it down. So again, I want to hold control or command and select all of the notes. Or if I want, I can actually just hit control or command A to select all. Uh, and of course I can just drag them all down, just down an octave like that. But what I can do is I can move all of these an octave at a time by holding control or command on my keyboard plus the down arrow key and it just shifts it down a whole octave. Okay, so that's fine, good stuff. And I just wanna carry on making this. So let's just zoom out a little bit there and just finish off our melody. So we've got dun 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 and then dun 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 uh something like that. So let's just play that. So there we go, we've got a basic baseline melody, which I just hummed and then literally just transferred. You know, you've got to figure out what the notes are, obviously. Dun, dun, dun. Copy the notes over from what you've hummed. But this is probably the most basic, but also one of the most used ways of actually getting a melody into your track. Okay, so that's good. We've got a baseline melody in. Let's just close the piano roll window. And I can just for now close my GMS as well. That can just be shut off. It's still there, of course. I'm just sort of hiding it from view. And there's one more thing that I want to do, and that is in the channel rack. You can see these numbers, one, two, three, four. Well, these tell us which track in the mixer, this window here that we haven't actually looked at yet, those numbers refer to these channels here. So one, two, three, four. If I play it, you can see the levels moving on tracks one through four. Now what I want to do is just go to the channel rack and then we're going to change GMS. If you just click on that and drag it up, you can see there you're basically choosing the channel in the mixer. So I'm just going to choose channel five because it's the next in line. So we've got all of our elements on a different channel in our mixer. Now that's all I'm going to discuss about the mixer for now. We don't actually need to talk about it until a couple of lessons time when we start getting more into it. But just know that as we're adding elements to our channel rack, we pretty much always send them through to a unique channel on our mixer. 
So for now, I can actually close the mixer if I want, or I can use this button here to hide or show the mixer. We don't actually need it really at the moment, so we can just leave it hidden, that's fine. Tidies up our environment a little bit. Okay, so we're almost at the end of this particular lesson. Now I'm just gonna show those of you who have a keyboard how to actually record in a performance in FL Studio. So if you don't have a keyboard or you're just not interested, you can actually skip on to the next lesson where we're going to make a lead melody for our track. And don't worry, nothing I show in the rest of this particular lesson is actually gonna be relevant to the rest of the tutorial, so you're not gonna miss anything. It's just for those people who are interested in recording their keyboard into FL. And it's only gonna take a couple of minutes. So providing that your MIDI keyboard is enabled like I showed earlier in the video, then you can easily record into FL. Just hit the record button and it's gonna ask you what you want to record. So here we're not looking to record any audio. We just want to record notes. So just select notes and automation there. Now with that done, you can see that the record button is now sort of highlighted. That means it's armed and ready to record whenever you next hit play and start tapping keys on your keyboard. So again, bear in mind, we're not actually gonna be using any of what we're doing right now in the rest of the tutorial. I'm just doing this for an example so you know how to do this. So a couple more things before we actually try recording. That is you can activate a counting if you like by selecting that button there. So if you've got record enabled, I'll just play this for you. So what's gonna happen is And again, you can see the countdown timer there. I can also change that if I want a longer counting, I can right click on that button and select two bars. Just gives you more of a chance to get ready for your performance. Also, another important button is this one here, which is blend recording. So you can either have it turned on or off. If I have it off, when I start playing a MIDI pattern, I'm gonna actually end up rewriting whatever I've got in there. So for example, if I play it now, when I stop, you can see that all of the notes over here have been overwritten. Now I don't want to do that, so I can undo by holding Control or Command, Alt or Option plus Z. You can also undo from the edit menu up here as well. But if I have blend selected, then of course what's gonna happen when I play and then record, it's just gonna add the notes to that particular pattern. So when I stop it, it doesn't delete any notes. You can just see we've got both sort of sets of notes there if you like. So again, Control or Command plus Option or Alt and Z to undo, because we don't wanna have any of that. We just wanna keep our same original pattern. And then when you finish recording, you can then unarm the record button. And then of course, when you play it, you won't have that count in again. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.